I'm going to start soliciting because I want you guys to start thinking with this stuff. <clears throat> Pardon me, not just in group. And hey, some wild points. Let me hear some wild points from last time. And, and uh, as, as we today, second half today, as we open up that head again, and and it's going to feel very much still like behavioral philosophy today as we look at that stuff. Yes, sir. Wild points. Uh, the things that we hear about people today. Is as we do get back into that brain second half, and again, so very important, you think about it, you guys, for a minute. So many, so many, so many of the things that we love to hate about people today, the things that we do, people do, the way we are, our personalities, what we don't do, the way we think, this, that, and everything else. So many of those things that we do today that can get us in trouble, can get us a diagnostic code, could get us in jail. So many of the things that we love to hate about people today are the very things that made it possible for us to be here today in the first place. And one good example of that is, once again, one good example of that is that, hey, that brain, quick, cheap, and easy. I learned a long time ago. You spend 2,700 calories for a piece of food worth 1,300 calories, and you do that very long, you're going to be dead. That brain learned quick, cheap, and easy. It learned it's selfish. It learned aggressive. It learned. Hey, gang, today, you know, you, all you want is immediate gratification and things like that. That brain learned. Gang, when it comes down to the situation is a tiger attack. And again, tiger, let tigers be a metaphor for any of the threats, the very real and dangerous and lethal threats that we faced back then. When this brain is learning about this world and learning how to help us survive back then. That brain that never forgets back then. When it comes down to a tiger threat, the only thing that mattered to that brain at that point, it doesn't matter. I threw all my sticks away at the tiger. I throw them all. Hey, I'm standing on a ledge. It's, it's 300 feet down. There's nothing this way. And, all, and there's a tiger waiting for me there. All I have are the sticks I got from my fire tonight and tomorrow morning. <clears throat> I'm not going to reason with the damn. I throw my sticks at the tiger. And they go tumbling down, but they scare the tiger off. Well, nice job, Celts. Now, you got no sticks for your fire. You never think, do you? You never plan ahead. Yeah, never. Yeah, never think about tomorrow. You always want immediate gratification. You got to remember that brain. It's sitting there, right then and there. Who gives a shit about these sticks if I'm going to be tiger lunch in a couple minutes anyway? Do you see what I'm saying with this stuff, you guys? And that brain learned that a long time ago. All these kinds of things that we do today. And yeah, the brain in our head today, brain, well, it should know better. But it learns from its ongoing personal experience also. That brain, hey, that brain that doesn't know until we tell it. Another very good example of that. The pleasure center, you guys. And again, that pleasure center that has such a serious right now, such a very serious public relations issue going on. What's the public relations problem that Pleasure Center is having right now? That's where drugs work. That's where drugs and alcohol work. And we've got to think to ourselves, again, what the hell, and again, lectern, not a pulpit, what the hell were they thinking? Why did they put a part in our head two million years ago that's going to make us a bunch of drug addicts and alcoholics two million years later. What the hell were they thinking? Is that, was that just some dirty little trick they decided? No. What is that? That's not there to turn us into drug addicts, alcoholics. What is that? That's the part of the brain that made sure we did the things we needed to do. Back then, in that very difficult place to be, that dangerous competitive. Hey, that's the part of the brain that when I whacked you in the head and took your food back in those, guess what? That lit up. Good work, Kelts. Nice job. You got food. To hell with you. To hell with your gene pool. To hell with your <coughs> I got food. And so do you see what I'm saying? I'm taking care of my... That's the part of the brain. We didn't have public service announcements, health class, civics class, FDA warning signs. We were on our own. This is the part of the brain. When we ate when we were hungry. We drank water when we were thirsty. We cooled it down when we were hot. And you know what? All those other things. And you better have sex once in a while if you want to propagate the species and everything else. That's the part of the brain that made sure that when you did something that was good for you, it felt real good. Because, well, you remember from last semester, the law of effect. If it feels good, do it. If it don't feel good, don't do it no more. That's the part of the brain that made sure we did good stuff. Good in terms of our survival back then. But that part of the brain, it doesn't know the difference. 
that part of the brain doesn't know the difference. That brain, that, hey gang, that brain doesn't know much at all beyond autonomic. We're going to be talking about early, uh, in a little bit how to keep the body working, right? That brain doesn't know. Hey gang, right now, there's a baby being born at St. Francis Hospital. Well, yes. Right now, there's a baby being born in Mexico City. Does that baby being born in Peoria right now, does it know that one of these days it's going to say one, two, three, and that baby in Mexico City, does that brain already know it's going to say one of those phrases? Does it know that already? No! It's got to be told of that stuff. You see what I'm saying? That brain that doesn't know stuff <coughs> until we tell it. That's how it learns about itself in the world. That brain that doesn't know the difference right here, it doesn't know the difference at this level, that phylogenetic Cuddle level with that. It doesn't know the difference between. It doesn't know the difference between eating when you're hungry, having sex, or doing cocaine. All it knows for the last two million years is if you do something like this part of the brain up, that means it's good for you. Love it, do lots of it. Does that make sense? Now the brain in our head, yeah. Other parts of that brain, yeah, well, that's bad. You're not supposed to do cocaine. You're not supposed to be selfish. You're not supposed to go for immediate gratification. Those kinds of things. But gang, old brain versus new brain, when it comes push to shove every time, which one's going to win? Old. The old brain is going to win every time. Gang, I'm kind of stepping on maybe wild points, but one more thing and I want to hear more wild points. 95% of human psychology lives right down here when we get down to that. Most of what that brain is about. You know, a simple little, first of all, it seeks via our sensory apparatus. We hear stuff, see stuff, smell stuff, taste stuff, feel stuff. It, it takes in its immediate environment. What is this? What's going on? And then the second step is once it takes that in, it perceives that, it thinks about it. What is this situation? What is going on? Let me think about this for a minute. <coughs> and from that thinking process, it seeks to what? Orchestrate then what is the next best right thing to do? For what? It's survival. Does that make sense? That's it. That's the brain. That's what it's doing. That brain doesn't give a shit about your favorite, favorite TV show or that the Cubs are going to screw us this year mm -hmm. and not let us watch them on TV anymore without spending a thousand dollars. Any Cub fan, do you hear about that? No. That brain doesn't care about that. That brain doesn't care. You see what I'm saying with this stuff? All that brain cares about is what takes in. What's the situation? What's going on right now? And to that brain, it is very much an immediate gratification brain. All that matters to that brain is right now. What's going on? That's all that matters. If I don't deal with right now, there's a good chance... 15 minutes from now, let alone tomorrow or next year, it doesn't, isn't going to matter anyway. And when we're confronted with a true real threat and that brain, then machinates that into and it starts to feel to that brain like a tiger attack. And we do that, you guys. We take life as it is today. And by the time we get done thinking about it, don't forget, take it in, think about it, respond. And if in that thinking about it, part of that, if how we think about it, we turn a modern, non-life-or-death problem into a, what feels like to that old brain, a tiger attack. Oh no, I can't believe you said that. I can't believe you did that. I can't, this is the worst possible awful thing. I can't stand this. Oh no, oh no. And at some point, you tell yourself, think it yourself that enough. That old brain hears that and it says, wow, that sounds like a tiger attack. Don't worry, I'm here for you. We'll kick in fire, fight, kick ass. Let's get going. And when that happens, you guys, and we modern humans are real talented tiger makers. We take life, and by the way, we think about it, turn it into that attacking tiger. And once that happens, and that kicks in with that, nothing else matters. I just won this argument. Of course, I pissed you off to the point you don't want to talk to me for the next three and a half weeks. There goes this and that. Dan, why don't you, you know what? In, in the moment of that, though, nothing else. 
our feelings, our relationship, what we had planned for tonight, let alone tomorrow, this, that, nothing else that matters. The only thing that matters, once that brain turns it into a tiger attack, the only thing that matters is winning this fight. Do you see what I'm saying with that? Why don't you think they'll be for Gang, when we, by the way we think ourselves into, in, in modern life, we turn ourselves into that tiger attack, nothing else matters. Because that brain learned a long time ago. When it comes to a real tiger attack, if you don't, everything, everything goes to this now. To hell with everything else. Yeah, I threw my sticks. There goes my fire tonight and tomorrow. Nice job, Kels. You don't plan, do you? you just everything, immediate gratification. You know what? If I didn't throw those sticks at the tiger, yeah, I know I've got no sticks now. But who would have cared anyway? Because I would have been tiger lunch. I wouldn't have needed those sticks anyway. Does that make sense? Now, when we do these crazy things today, now what the fuck's wrong with you? What, what, how do you think? You know, maybe you better <coughs> before you open your mouth and things like that. But we've got to remember another thing, you guys, the energy it takes to fight a tiger, full-blown fight or flight, is very, 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 very expensive energy. Do you see what I'm saying with this? Fight or flight. And fight or flight, we're going to see ranges. I mean, every single thing you do uses some sympathetic energy, sympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system. Everything you do, reaching for a glass of water is fight or flight. But think about that for a minute. One of the things that brain needs to learn very early on, what did I say? That brain needs to, we already are really good warrior abouters. We're born very talented warrior abouters down here. That newborn baby is a fantastic, <coughs> already warrior about her. One of the things that that brain needs to learn as soon as possible, via its experience with the environment, is not what to worry about. It's already good at worrying about stuff. But what don't worry about. What you don't have to worry about here. <coughs> Another thing it's gonna learn is, even the stuff you need to worry about, how much do you need to worry about it? If I use fighter, if I use tiger fighting, fire flight energy to reach for my glass of water, the water, the glass is flying against the wall and the water's flying. Everything you do uses fight or flight. That brain needs to learn how to modify, regulate how much you need for what's the situation. You see what I'm saying? We don't want to use too much fight or flight for something that we don't need that much fight or flight. Like, I'm trying to sit here and figure out where we want to go to dinner tonight. And just because you don't want to go to Logan's and I want to doesn't mean... Do you see what I'm saying? But if I turn that into, you know, you fucking never... You know what, you know what I'm saying? And the next thing you know, you become an attacking tiger. You get to hell with dinner tonight. I got a battle to win here. And, and that brain, it processes it that way. I know I'm damaging the relationship. I know I'm this, I'm that. Come on, Kels, can't you think a little bit? At that point, no. When fight or flight kicks in, thinking shuts down. When fight or flight kicks in, thinking shuts down, you guys. Fight or flight is very, very, very expensive. It demands, I mean, it involves just about every single square inch of your body, every organ system, and everything. To mobilize the energy to do what it needs to do in order to prepare that body for the only thing that matters right now is when the fucking fight against the tiger, which is bigger than you need to start with. You see what I'm saying? That's all that matters. When fight or flight kicks in, thinking shuts down, which is kind of good if you think about it. Kind of that, that, that's kind of adaptive also, because under true fight or flight, fight or flight, if you're sitting there trying to think about stuff. Well, hey, get a load of that tiger. What, what do you think? Well, I'd say about, what, 187 pounds? Mm -hmm. uh, what's that coming in? Well, I'd say about 30 miles an hour. Did you get a load of By the time we get done thinking about it, we're tiger lunch. You say, no, fuck the thing. We got it. <laughs> that's, that's all that matters. Do you hear what I'm saying with that? And it's not that we choose to stop thinking. It's just that brain. That brain that can't do these things well at the same time. Would you shut up? I'm trying to talk. Can't talk to you both at the same time. We can't talk to two people at the same time, let alone. Fight or flight is an incredibly, incredibly, incredibly expensive process. And when fight or flight kicks in, something's got to go. Well, guess what else is very, very, very expensive to do? 
thinking. Thinking is an incredibly expensive process. Please get your life together out there. Huh? Oh. They need to really get their lives together out there. Wait, what's going on? It's a car. It's a car alarm. Oh. But thinking is also a very expensive process. Fire alarm, but it was loud and you guys, you guys, when 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 firefight kicks in, something's got to go. What go with thinking? You've all been there. Every person in this room, you know what I'm talking about. You've gotten suddenly startled, pissed off, angry, or something like that. And you flew off, you lost your temper or something. You dead said something and probably as soon as you dead said it, you thought to yourself, oh shit, I shouldn't have done said that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying with that? Why did I done said that? Because in that split second, that's all that mattered to that brain. Somehow or another, you have become a tiger to me. And my old brain learned a long time ago there's only one thing to do about tigers. You see what I'm saying with that, you guys? Now, again, okay, Kelts, that's fine, but we're not talking about 2 million years ago, 100,000 years ago. What does that got to do with us today? Because that brain that never forgets what, well, I know, you forgot half that chemistry test or something, I know. But when it comes to survival, it never forgets. The brains that had the capacity to say to hell with everything else, I got a tiger. Brains that did that. Maybe not all brains did that. Maybe other brains were sitting there trying to count their sticks while they're trying to beat off a tiger. Guess where they are today? Okay. They're tiger poop. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have reproductive <laughs> rights because they all got eaten. They didn't make more of themselves. The brains that had the wherewithal to do what they needed to do to survive, those were the brains that had the reproductive rights. They were the ones that passed themselves off from one generation to the next. Do you see what I'm saying with this? And so, what has this got to do with today? That brain that never forgot that good old day like that. But the problem is, and we are gonna see this, and as long as we're going this direction, I guess we're gonna do brain first and motivational interviewing second today. Because I've already gone well into the brain with, with one very good wow point. And, and the thing is, you guys, yeah, we're gonna see this, uh, that there's other parts of that brain not just the tiger spider part of that brain. There are other parts, and there is a modern thinking part of that brain. But that modern thinking part of that brain basically learns to think the way it thinks based on how it interacts and learns from its environment. And if we have, if we have what becomes a tiger maker, modern thinking part of the brain, Everything's a major tragedy. Everything's, oh, I can't stand this. Oh, that's so unfair. Oh, poor me. Oh, no, fuck this. Oh, no, oh, awful, awful that. Awful, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. That brain's living in a world full of self-imposed, now, tigers. And the next thing you know, because you're not acting exactly the way I want you to act, all of a sudden, I'm very good at turning that into a tiger attack. Now, I'm doing crazy shit. Do you guys see how and where this fits, what I'm talking about here? How and where this fits into addiction? Mm -hmm. Again, people don't. That basic, well, the hedonic calculus is one of the basic tenets of that. We don't ruin our lives for the fun of it. We don't self-destruct just because it feels good. There are reasons for what we do. <coughs> and then when we throw in those reasons, don't forget, hey, yeah, those very real things that happened that were bad, hey, those very real things that happened that by the time we get done thinking about them, they're still feeling so bad. What was number four, those real things happening now that by the time we get done thinking about them, they feel so bad. We're turning all those, those number fours, what are they? They're, they're things that we, by the way we think about them, we're turning them into tigers. And then we live in a world full of tigers, and that sucks. That feels really bad. And then we combine that with all the tigers we had from the past, our ones and twos and everything else. And I'm sitting here thinking, what the fuck, I feel nothing. Hey, and I discover, however you spell relief, C-O-C-A-I-N-E or whatever else, do you see what I'm saying with that? Do you see how this fits in with understanding addiction? And that's what I keep saying. That Hanani, do I even have to write that on the board anymore? 
Does everybody got it in your mind's eye? And again, that great big giant plus and all that other stuff, what keeps the Hadani calculus worth it to that? What have I always said? As long as it's still worth it, they're going to still do it. Is that thing still going off? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is that a car alarm or is it? It sounds, it sounds like one of those Jeeps or those old VWs. It sounds like somebody's phone or something. It's a Honda right here. But whatever. Honda, but again, yeah. as long as it's still worth it, we're going to keep doing it that way. What did we say? We have to help it so that the Hadani calculus is no longer worth it. How do we do that? What's keeping the Hadani calculus worth it? The way we're making tigers out of them. As long as every time I oh, what are you what are you looking at me like that for? Like, you know what you're always fucking with. Oh um, I got a tiger. Oh, you don't agree with me. Oh I got a oh this happened. Oh that happened. Oh, how dare some asshole won't turn off their horn and it's bothering me right now. I can't stand that. Oh, another tiger. Do you see what I'm saying with that stuff, you guys? Mm -hmm. and, and we're really good. We can take the simplest little things, can't we? And the next thing you know. And yeah, part of part of that nowhere. We're gonna look at all this, you guys. There's a part of that brain that should be helping us say, yeah, it's not such a tiger, Dan. Calm down. In fact, we talked about that last time. Maybe any, hopefully another wild point was that, uh, and we talked about it last month a little bit also. That that stop sign. That's supposed to calm down. You know what? Don't worry. That's not such a tiger. That's not just your tiger. Watch out. You don't have to worry. Maybe you don't need quite so much. Don't forget. I mean, try it. Try tiger fighting level energy to just reach for your soda. The can's bouncing against the wall. Soda's all over the place. And guess what you don't got? Do you see what I'm saying with this? That kind of a thing like that. And so that's what that stop sign, that, that part of the brain. It's simple. Don't worry. It's not such a tiger. But what if that stop sign is becoming wobbly because of stress, because of illness, because of injury, because of... Drugs. What if this? What if that? Hey, you think about that person once again with their Hadani calculus, all these things going on. Every one of those is a little shovel taking another piece of dirt out of the roots of that stop sign. And, and that kind of a thing. And then that brain's not doing that modulation job nearly as effectively, and all of a sudden, even more things become more easily tigers. And we get into a vicious cycle with that. Do you see what I'm saying with that? Gang, this is so important in our understanding. Again, then, I keep saying, as long as that current hedonic calculus is working, it's going to stay that way and no change will happen. What do we do? We have to help make it so that that current hedonic calculus is no longer working. How do we do that? Well, there's not a lot we can do. I can't go buy a new house. Buy a, I can't go make somebody give you a, a $200,000 a year job. I can't, this, I can't make everybody stop being mad at you. I can, what can I do? I can help you learn how to think differently in a way that you stop making so many damn tigers. And when you stop making so many damn tigers, there will be less tigers attacking you, which means there is less reason to run from tigers, which means there is less reason to pay the price for the intoxication. Does that make sense? Do you hear what I'm saying with that? All of a sudden, I don't have so many things I'm running from anymore. I'm drunker and shit. And have you ever heard this one? You ever heard this one where people, they get old, you know what, I, I, I've gotten old and, and I'm not fun anymore. I, I'm just not so much fun anymore. I got older and I'm not so much fun. These, when we were younger, we used to have so much fun. Now that I'm old, I've become boring. No, maybe what it is is when that person gets old, they realize they weren't having all that much fun in the first fucking place. What kind of a price were they paying for it back then? You see what I'm saying? I mean, if you think about it, your party days, how much fun was it really? First of all, most of the fun that you thought you were having, you don't even remember because by the time you were having that much fun, you were too intoxicated to remember it the next day anyway. What you do get to remember is the hangover and the costs that you incurred. 
because of what you thought you were doing, having so much fun. You see what I'm saying with that? And all of a sudden, still paying that price for this, and, and it, what, 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 it's not worth it no more. And when that hedonic calculus becomes not worth it no more, don't tell your English teacher how I talk. When that hedonic calculus becomes not worth it no more, change will happen. Does that make sense? Did, did, did I just put in a... Do you hear what I'm saying with this, you guys? I mean, I, I, I just about the end, just about the whole story. Just I just just about the whole story. Just right then, everything. Did I, did you hear what I'm saying with that? If I came in here Thursday morning and said, write down, summarize, in good articulate language what I just what I said Tuesday morning, can you do it right now? Seriously. Any questions? Thought? I want to hear reactions to this, you guys. Make those brains go to work. Don't let me just force feed your head. I want your brains to. All right, Kels, let me, let me, uh, let's talk about this for a minute. And clue, do you hear what I'm saying with that? That was all because of one damn brow point. Cool. Cool. That's how I, one little wow point, look where we went with that. That's how I want your brains working with this stuff, you guys. That's how I want your brains to work with this stuff. And we are going to get back into this. Do you hear what I'm saying? Does that make sense to you guys? Let me hear just so before we, and as long as we have spent this much time talking about the brain, we'll, we'll do brain first today and then motivational interviewing second instead of the other way around today. But other wow points from last time? Yes, yes. I'm playing off for the, uh, the fight and the flight, but the other two Fs, with the levels of survival. Fight, flight, feed, and? Fuck. <laughs> I knew Blair was going to talk. Don't create. But yeah, that was four. Um, the other two, I... Are Again, the levels of survival. that's the stuff of basic survival. Back in, you guys, you got to think of something here. For most of what becomes humans, for most of the history of what becomes us, mm -hmm. sapien sapien, we were just like all the other animals. Hell, we were crawling on all fours, just like all the other animals. Question. I'm trying to figure out, because she, like what she was saying, I have many, I apologize, but when she said the four Fs, I've seen it in this uh, booklet. Fight, flight, feed, and uh, uh, make more of ourselves. Procreate. That's very inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> and gang, what we got to remember, for most of the history, for most of has anybody ever heard of the geological or the evolutionary clock? Yeah. And we're about here right now. Most of what is us history, sapien sapien, is about the last couple minutes. All the rest of the time before that, mm -hmm. there was something there that became us, but it wasn't us yet. For most of our what became us history, we were just like the other animals. We were walking on all fours like the other animals. We were, we, we were basically just just like the other animals, 4F-level survivors. Fight, flight, feed, in reproduction. That's all that mattered to that brain. As long as we stayed alive long enough to have sex and reproduce and propagate the genetic pool, that's all that mattered. Back in those good old days, think about this for a minute. What was old age, even as, as, as the first pre, last steps of pre-human and then human came up. What was old age back in those good old days? If you're lucky to make 30. 30! Hey, the weatherman back then, today is 100 years old. Well, Ethel's 100 years old today. Who gives a shit, Ethel? <laughs> back then, <laughs> Ethel's 30. Think about it. Why? Hey, reproductive time's over. You're not useful anymore. Your body's not useful anymore. You're done making babies and everything else. See you later. Let's make room for the next generation. Gang, for most of human history, the 4F level survival, that's all. Now, there, there were parts of the, this part of the brain's been evolving for a while. I often say that that brain in our head was another proposition. The brain in our head, a very old brain, at least for the last 2 million plus years. The same brain that's been in our head for a very long time. And it's been learning about that, but most of that brain wasn't being used very much. Most of that brain, what was being used a whole bunch? The first part, that, what did I call that last time? That reptilian brain. 
that very, very, very old brain, that part of the brain that we share with exactly like all the other animals, whether you're talking about other primates or even fish, amphibians, and reptiles, and everything else. And this was the part of the brain that was real busy doing what? Fight, flight, feed, and. You see what I'm saying with that? And, and, and you guys, that's all that mattered. And so, as long as we were doing that okay, and this part of the brain was learning more and more and more and more. Again, you know, what? I mean, when we do this, there's a lot of arbitrary and almost narcissistic level arrogance when it comes to dividing this brain in various ways. It's just very arbitrary. We're going to divide this brain into three parts in these discussions, these next few discussions. The old brain, the reptilian brain, the middle brain, and then the Rospo or the, uh, or the new brain. That kind of a thing. We're going we're gonna to have that, but that's kind of almost a narcissistically artificial thing, like we really know that kind of a thing like that. And we're going to see how each one of these three different parts, ages, levels of the brain play a role in what becomes the modern human experience, what becomes the hedonic calculus, what becomes the right and wrong of the modern human experience and all that kind of a thing. But for the most part, you guys, this is the part of the brain that dictated for most of I mean, if we go back, we could go back all the way, if you wanted to, to the primordial pool, a lectern and not a pulpit. If we just went back as far as a pithecine level, pre-sapien-sapien. -sapien, if we just went that far back, and we still, already we're on, walking on twos. But gang, this is, this part of the brain, 4F level survival. The only thing that matters to that part of the brain, which is still in your head this very moment, and still very active, and still remembers every damn thing that got it to the point that it's still here today in the first place. You see what I'm saying with this? All that stuff. This very talented warrior about her part of the brain. Again, I'm going to say, again, gang, that very talented warrior about her part of the brain. That part of the brain we're born with. I mean, again, you think of those newborn babies. They're real good warrior abouters, aren't they? They're worried about everything. That brain that learned a lot, this part of the brain, that, you know what? This is it. A dangerous, scary place to be. You better watch out for it and be worried about everything. That's what I said. Hey, one of the jobs very early on in that environment is to help that brain start to learn as quickly as possible what don't worry about. How much to worry about what you do need to worry about. Back in the old days, that part of the brain had all kinds of stuff to worry about. Everything was, it was just an ongoing, non-stop struggle for, lethal struggle for survival to this very day. Because worrying about is, was as expensive back then as it is today. Anxiety is a very, very, very costly, very expensive state of mental affairs. That's why we end up with all those psychosomatic illnesses with anxiety, heart disease, and all those other problems we have because, we, because that body is so damn busy. <laughs> that body is so damn busy keeping you on your toes. It's so busy worrying about everything. It can't do its other stuff very well. One thing that falls out is, well, number one, it just starts to wear out. At some point, because don't forget, every time fight or flight kicks in the heart and all that other stuff, that stuff just starts to wear out. And the other thing is, another thing that can't get going the way it should be when this is so damn busy is the immune system. And we fall prey then to opportunistic infection. You take a look at your personal life. You're always, you notice that you're always a little bit sicker. You always catch that cold a little bit quicker or the flu or something a little bit easier under stress than if you weren't so damn stressed out. You see what I'm saying with that kind of stuff like that? And so from the very beginning, and that's all that brain had to worry about. And worry, worry, worry. Gang, I told you about the McDonald's baby, didn't I? And don't forget, gang, while this is so busy, while this is so busy down here, all this part of the brain up here 
not only wasn't it, it that busy to start with, but it didn't have time to get going anyway. Because it was too busy worrying about stuff and tigers and protecting itself from tigers down here. Does that make sense? And you remember that McDonald's baby story, right? And, and, and again, like I said, I don't think that was just mom and grandma having a bad day. They were real good at what they were doing, being the people they were. They were real good at that. What is that? Well, 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 that baby's brain should have been busy learning about mommy, daddy, please, thank you, and two and two is four. Its brain, instead of learning what not to worry about, that brain was learning what? There's a whole lot. This is even worse than I thought. We better get even better at <coughs> this. Do you see what I'm saying with that? And while that's so busy doing that, guess what? This stop sign's getting wobblier and wobblier and wobblier and wobblier. <coughs> I could imagine, unless some miracle happened, and like I say, I don't think it was just mom and dad having a, or mom and grandma having a bad day. They were really good at this. I expect this kid was dealing with this all the time. Unless some miracle happened between then. That was about eight years ago now, seven or eight years ago. I can't remember for sure. This kid has probably got a file this thick already with diagnoses and problems and everything else. You see what I'm saying with that? Is that because he was an evil state? No, it's because right there it is, right there, you guys. And that brain, and that, and that kid's brain today, that kid's brain today who's not getting along well with others, who doesn't cooperate. Hey, you took my pencil, whack you in the head, or whatever else. What a bad brain. No, that brain is just doing exactly what it was taught it needs to do to survive. Do you understand what I'm saying with that? That brain is doing, just doing exactly <coughs> what it learned it needs to be doing. And we've got to keep those kinds of things in mind. Gang, the Hidani calculus is not a way to explain the pathology of addiction. It's really a way to explain the normalcy of addiction. Do you understand what I'm saying with that? Even, even that brain. That, you know, that's one of the things. We keep diseasifying. You have a disease while you're crazy, while you're out of control, while you're insane, while you're this and that and everything else. That's why stop it, stop it, stop it. That counselor who said, my clients act like cavemen. You ain't a shit and they do. Because this is where they're living, right down here with this stuff. Now, things happened, you guys. In the course of the history of what eventually becomes us. And we could spend the rest of the semester just talking about this, and it is kind of fascinating. We'll just, we'll just point out a, a couple, two or three. Things happened that played a role in us becoming who we are. Well, one thing that happened that played a role in us becoming who we are was what's called the KT event of 65 million years ago. Does anybody know what that is? When that great big old asteroid landed in the Gulf of Mexico and ended up killing all the dinosaurs. Because guess what? Who we, our ancestors, didn't get much bigger than this before that. Why not? This is, you, you ever see Raquel Welch in a bikini fending off a T-Rex? Those popular 1950s movies? And there's, where the hell did you get a bikini in, in 2000 BC in the first place? But there's Raquel Welch, and she's fighting off that. Gang, what's the first most important thing wrong with that movie? Humans and dinosaurs never coexisted. We never coexisted with dinosaurs. Not the bees, not when still are today coexisting with dinosaurs, actually. They, they're in the birds and stuff. But, but the thing is, <coughs> the thing is, what? Mammals didn't get much bigger than this when the dinosaurs were there. If we get any bigger than this, they could see us and they'd eat us. We would have never had a chance. And so one thing was the KT event. It killed off the dinosaurs and let us start to begin to get bigger and bigger and bigger. But for most of that, a second thing that played a major role with this, and think about this, a second thing is that for most of our human history, we're walking on all fours. It's just like all the other animals. Now don't forget, gang, this brain at that point, billions of neurons, not this part of the brain, busy, 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 this part of the brain, the middle part is pretty busy too because it has to help with the autonomic system and things. But the, the thinking part of the brain especially not very busy. We were doing everything we already needed to do. Fight, flight, feed, and fornicate. We didn't need to worry about the rest of this stuff. You see what I'm saying with that? That's all. So that part of the brain didn't need to be that busy. 
And then something happened. Once again, lectern not a pulpit. I don't know where, why, or how. But one day, we go from this to this. What does that have to do with the development of the modern human brain? What does that have to do with the development of the modern human brain? Anybody? I'm going to give you another little thing. The more a brain thinks, how did we say it? The more you do it, the better you get, the better you get. The easier it is, the easier it is. The more you do, the more you do, the better you get. And it's that with thinking also. But this brain wasn't thinking a whole, not at this level, not thinking a whole bunch. It didn't need to. The problem is, you think about this. I mean, to hell with a hungry tiger. How about just an angry dog? Right today, you're out in the front lawn, and an angry dog comes along. Try and get away from that dog on all four and see how far you get with it. <laughs> we were at a pretty serious disadvantage. But didn't our brains develop even with the uh, making of like tools and stuff? Wasn't that logical Hold that. part? Hold that. Okay. Guess where we're going right now? There. Because what was the major, major thing as we started to walk upright? What was, what did that have to do with what becomes the modern human brain? All of a sudden, I got these. What the hell? Yesterday, these were feet. Just like all the other. Today, I got these. What are these? I know. Let's call them hands. Well, what am I going to use them for? Well, I know one thing I can do. How about this? The next time I see that hungry tiger coming at me, I'll pick up a rock and throw it at him. Hopefully, beat him in the head. I hit them right, just perfect right here. In two million years, they're going to pay me $60 million a year to pitch at Wrigley Field. <laughs> That's what Spritz is, you guys. <coughs> All it's just based on survival. Pretending we're surviving. Hey. Two million years ago, I had to throw that fastball right down the middle because that's how I stopped that tiger. Today, I'm making $60 million a year doing it, but it's the same thing. You see what I'm saying with that? Mm. One day, how about this? How about if I did another thing with my hands? How about this? I pick up this big stick and I go like this. You know what? You get close enough. Those teeth of yours and those claws of yours, I'm done. But if I can poke you at you, I know. But, but, and gang, every time that brain thought of, what can I use these for? It made a different part of this thinking part of the brain go to work. Do you realize how many parts of that brain have to work exquisitely well to throw that fastball right down the middle? Do you realize how many parts of that brain has to work exquisitely well for that? Do you realize that? Every time, I thought, what do I use these hands for? Everything I started to use these hands for made a different part of that brain go to work. Hey, I'll tell you what. And once that brain starts thinking, it thinks more. Once the more you do, the better you get, the better you get, the easier it is. Hey, I know. I'll do this. I'll take another one of those rocks, probably a sharp rock. I'll take that stick. I'll connect the rock to the stick. I'm going to use some sinew from that dead animal over there. And I'm going to go like this. And now I really got an edge. Do you see what I'm saying with this? And every single thing I did, yes, guess what? The beginnings of tool use. Mm -hmm. Do you realize how many parts of that brain needed to get busy using tools that we never used before tools? Mm -hmm. And as those parts of the brain started to get busier and busier, not only did they get better and better at what they're doing, and now my great, 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 great times 30 generations later, 50 generations later, grandson, who's making $60 million a year at Wrigley Field. Do you see what I'm saying with that? Yeah, starting to walk upright played a major, major, major role. One day, we got, yesterday these were hands, today, or feet, today they're hands. What do I do with these? And everything I started to do with these meant another part of that brain going to work and getting better and better and better at it. Does that make sense? Another, another major, we could go on with this forever. I mean, a third thing. First KT event, second walking upright. A third thing. We've always been noisemakers. But one day, again, where did it come from? One day, my noise started to make sense to you, and your noise started to make sense to me. Let's talk about it. The development of human language. Science. 
Guys, I'll tell you what. I may have, I may have a. Wait, let me sift through some piles here for a minute. I know I've got it. I just don't want to spend all morning just looking for a specific <laughs> slide. But while you're doing it, I'd like to add one thing, an observation, and that's that. All animal play is based on survival skills. Yeah. Yeah. Just like all human play is, including baseball, football, and everything else. Yep. And gang, look at, I, I want you to, let me, I guess I got to clean up my brain a little bit here, don't I? It looks like it's out of focus. <laughs> yeah. Gang, one day, your noise started to make sense to me, and my noise started to make sense to you. Let's talk about it. You know, when we think of the brain, we often love to think of the visual system as, and it is. Do you realize how complex the visual system is? Have any idea how incredibly complex that visual system is? And it is. Just the eyeball alone, let alone the retina, which is part of the brain. The optic nerve, and again, crossing at the lateral geniculus, and then at the optic chiasm, and then landing on the acetabal lobe, and all the things it's doing. Vision is so complicated, is nothing compared to the complexity of language. Do you realize, once we started to talk to each other, how many parts of this brain had to get really busy real fast? And we got better and better and better at it. And what were some other, once we started to talk to each other, what were some of the advantages of that? In terms of what becomes the modern human brain, the modern human experience. What were some advantages of that? Don't forget, one guess, sir. I was going to say teamwork. Huh? Teamwork. Yesterday, we're mortal enemies. The only thing that matters is who whacks who in the head the quickest and who gets whose food. I mean, think about this for a minute. Think about this for a minute. Now, there was another part, and we're going to have to rip this open here at the lateral and, and look inside what we call the limbic system, which we're going to. That's going to play a major role in, in modulate that reactive behavior, that initial fight or flight, kill or be killed, reactive behavior. But but think about this for a minute. I mean, life was probably pretty tough back then. I mean, damn it. What do I got? I, I checked my list. Let me see. I, I got to go kill a mammoth. I got to go. I got to get nuts and berries. I got to whack this guy in the head for his sticks because I threw all my sticks at the tiger yesterday. Damn it. I got this to do, I got that to do. I got, I, I'm going to hoard nuts and berries because, well, because I don't give a shit if you got any. I want to make sure I get all I need. Uh, they'll make a TV show about me in two million years called Hoarders, but that's all right. My, my other, my other uh, grandson will be making six million dollars a year, so hopefully they can help him out. And, and you see what I'm saying with this kind of stuff like that? And, and then, what a busy, busy day. And then I gotta watch out for hungry tigers along the way. I gotta watch out for somebody that wants to hit me in the head and take my stuff and everything else. What a busy day. And then I come along and I'm hauling back this damn piece of mammoth meat. And it's a hard shot. And I and I and I, I notice you. Like where the hell? Look at these nuts and berries. Where the hell do you get those nuts and berries? I have never seen nuts and berries that good. I, I have no idea where he's getting those nuts and berries anyway. Ivy. And so I know what's the next best thing to do. Whack you in the head and take your nuts and berries is the next best thing to do. Guess what? The party's on tonight. <laughs> Kelts is partying down tonight. That's the best damn nuts and berries I ever saw. I don't know where the hell you get. I, I never found nuts and berries. Like, how the hell you find? Wouldn't have been started but the party's or wait, Hold one second. The party's yes. on tonight. Except for one little problem. What's one little problem? And you're gonna have nuts and berries like that again. I don't know where you got those nuts and berries. Duh. Get it but together. You know what? I don't care. All I care about is the parties on tonight. Because you're an addict. Do you hear what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, I hear it. Oh you know my god, the light bulb just went off in my Do brain. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes. Did, did anybody's light bulbs go off with that? Holy Did you hear what shit. I just said? The party's on tonight. Oh my you. God, I'm I'm now, tomorrow I'm going to be kind of bummed out. God, I wonder where he did get those. <laughs> I shouldn't have done it that way. But you know what? At, in that moment, all that matters is get those nuts and berries and, have, and enjoy that. Light up that pleasure center. Does that make sense? Yes. Do you hear what I'm saying? And then one day, and I'll get with you in just a second. And then one day, 
just as I was about ready to whack you in the head, something in the middle of this brain, we're going to get to it. If I rip this open like that and look inside that brain, gang, look at how complex this is. Just language. Look at me. How complex just language is. Even so much more complex than even vision. And then one day, something just as I was better whack you in the head, something said, stop a minute. Let's talk about it. Your noise is making sense to me. My noise is... I, I, I'm going to make you a deal. I'll make... You know, by the way, we like your sticks and stones. I'll make you a deal. I'll meet you here tomorrow. I'll bring in my mouth. You bring in your... And of course, I'm taking license with... It. You know what I'm saying? But you hear... I'll bring in my mammoth. You bring in your nuts and berries. Bring your sticks and stones. Let's work together. Let's work together. Now, I want you to think about something, you guys. That one advantage all by itself, what did that do for us? Well, number one, here are two people I don't have to worry about whack me in the head no more. Number two, number two, guess what? I don't have to worry about nuts and berries and sticks and stones no more. I get to be the best mammoth player you ever saw. That's all. I, I get better and better at it. And I even get to start to use parts of my brain to figure out how to get even better and better. How do I even get better and better at getting that? You see what I'm saying? And doing whatever it takes to do what I need to do, to do what I need to do. And you don't have to worry about mammoth or sticks and stones no more. You become the best damn. In fact, one day, you even notice something. As you were hauling all those nuts and berries back from when you dropped a few back there a little bit. And all of a sudden, a few months later, of course we don't have a calendar yet, a few months later, <laughs> you don't have to go so far for your nuts and berries anymore. They're right there. Let's call that agriculture. One day, and, and, and you see what I'm saying? And, and we get better and better and better at this. The more... We get, what's another advantage? Gang, why wasn't 30 old age back then? Well, one thing is, of course, we could argue we didn't have the medical care and stuff the way we do today, and that's true. But basically, why was 30 old age back then? We were working ourselves to death. Every day, like, we were, we were, we were working ourselves to death. Now, all of a sudden, I don't have to work quite so hard. I get back with the mammoth. I don't have to go hunting nuts and berries and sticks and stones and doing this and doing that and everything else. I get a little time on my hand. I get to rest a little bit more, which lets me think a little bit more about, guess what? How to do my job even better and better. And I even at some point, because we're talking to each other now, I even get enough time on my hand at some point there was that red rock laying outside the cave one day, and I decided I well, cook, and I started making pictures on the cave. One of these days, let's call that what? The aesthetic values. Do you realize how wildly complex aesthetics are in that brain? And one of these days, we'll call this the Smithsonian Institute, a couple million years from now. That started to, I started to discover with that new ways to light up that pleasure center that didn't involve whacking people in the head anymore. You see what I'm saying with that? I started thinking, what else did talking do for us? A major in that brain. Hey, I was out there looking for my mammoth. That's my job. I noticed over there, if you, if you go around that down, go there, down there, there was some, I, I noticed some pretty interesting looking bushes over there. You may want to check that out. Let's talk about what we've learned. Instead of, I mean, 4F level survival is just in the moment survival. When we were able to start to talk about things, we started to be able to what? Live and understand and learn from history. And then another thing. Sure. When we started talking about stuff, we also got to think about and anticipate the future, mm -hmm. including a better future. Do you see what I'm saying with this? I mean, you think about that. So many advantages with that. As we started talking, what great, incredible, wild advantages. This, look at just, this is just language here, you guys. Now, don't forget that brain's still doing everything else it's doing. Plus now, every new thing we talk about, every new thing I figure out, every new thing this, every new thing that, 
Other parts of that brain getting busier and busier and busier and busier. And all of a sudden, you guys, all of a sudden, yeah, this is still there. We still got a pretty rough place to go here. But guess what? This part of the brain is getting busier and busier and busier and busier. And the busier this part of the brain gets, guess what? One of the most important advantages is as this brain starts to think and think and think and do and think and do and think and do, guess what? It means what's probably one of the most important things we're thinking about and doing is making our 4F level survival easier, safer, better. We're making it so that we don't have to. We are now on purpose creating less things to worry about. As we start to change that environment, the new brain that is changing. Remember, I, I, I divided that brain. I'll, I'll do it with this one right now. Because it, once again, here's that old brain. Here's that old brain. Learn how to live in this world, how to survive, kick ass, and that and the here and now, all the things we love to hate about people, all that stuff. Now we're gonna look at that middle brain, that middle brain that one day that helped me. That day, instead of whack you in the head, let's talk about it. That limbic system. But once we started talking, the changes that occurred, and the more this brain got busy, and what is it that we were in the beginning, how to do 4F better? And every time we figured out a way to do 4F better, that was one less thing to worry about. One less thing to worry about. Pretty soon, what are we doing? We're creating a world where this brain doesn't have to be quite as busy anymore. We're, we're, we're getting an edge on the tigers. We're getting an edge on nature. Hell, you don't even have to walk that farm. All you got to do is go <coughs> dig your holes right over here. Let's call it a garden. Agriculture. Things like that. We started to settle more from hunter-gatherer groups into settled small communities. Agriculture and things like that. And of course, that growing and growing. Look at all of the advantages that gave us in so many ways. And now I got the other side of that coin. What else did it do for us? Don't forget, yesterday, I mean, think about it. Yesterday, we're mortal enemies. And the most important thing is who gets to reproduce, who's going to have food, and who's going to kill the other fastest. What an easy world that was. I don't have a decision to make here. All I'm going to do is I, I, who grabs the stick and whacks the other one fastest? Who's the toughest? Who's the bestest? That way. That's not like we had a lot of decision making or anything. That was that four up level survival. That brain by now has gotten so good at it, there was no thinking or anything else going on. What a wonderfully simple place it was. And then, and that was yesterday. Today we made friends. Well, we just looked at all the advantages of that, but there was one major new problem. And what is that new problem? Yesterday, we're mortal enemies. Today, i got to worry about your feelings. <clears throat> Gee, now i got to worry about your damn feelings. I mean, what if, what if, what if this guy over here, and he, he throws something that calls you a poopy dog, and now you got bad self esteem. You don't feel like getting nuts and berries today. Now we suffer too. You see what I'm saying? All of a sudden, I got to worry about your damn feelings. Gang, when we started working together, when we started to talk to each other and work together, as fantastic as that was in so many ways, it created a hell of a new mess. Because all of a sudden, we had to start to get along. As a matter of fact, I remember one day, I thought you shorted me on some of my favorite purple berries here. And, and that old part of my brain is still there. And it's still pretty pronounced. Yeah, I was about to grab that stick. Then I found out that you guys hired that guy. You called him a cop. His job was to make sure I don't whack people in the head no more with sticks. <laughs> We're going to throw him a few berries just to keep you and help you stay alive. You see what I'm saying with that? But that's still in us to this very day, you guys. That brain that never forgets, that old brain. But the problem is, once we started to work together with all the advantages, it created a whole new set of problems called what? How do we get along? How do we not kill each other? And gang, I'm going to tell you something. As complex as language is, as complex as vision is, and everything else we're going to be looking at and talking about with this incredibly, this astonishingly fascinating brain. One of the most difficult things that brain has to do to this very day, I, I'll, I need more boards. I need a bigger table up here. And 
They just don't take care of me well. That ain't <laughs> one of the most difficult things in this very day. Every day, one of the most complex things this brain has to do every day. Frontal lobe is not kill each other. That part of the brain is still there and it's still more than happy and it's kind of good because once in a while, uh, tigers uh, still do attack, don't they? They're not always swirling in time, but they still attack. It's kind of nice we still got that. But the pro and, and, it's still, and it's still as good as it ever was, that brain that never forgets. The only problem is most of the things we, as we started this with, the problem is once we got to thinking, 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 all of a sudden, I'm pissed off at you because these aren't as good as they were yesterday. What the fuck? You holding back on me or what? <laughs> no, you just, I mean, not every day is going to be as good as the next, but instead of me just accepting that you didn't find as many good berries today, you said, yeah, okay, well, hopefully tomorrow will be better. Instead of that, my brain goes, dude, you're fucking with me. You see what I'm saying? And all of a sudden, we got a new tiger. It's not really a tiger until I turn it into a tiger. Of course, I whack you in the head. There goes the nut and berry getter. And now everybody's mad at me. Because now none of us got nuts and berries. Do you see how this is working, you guys? This slow evolution of this stuff. And so, yeah. And gang, I'm going to tell you this very day. Anybody with the right tools can be a tough guy. My gun's bigger than your gun. Anybody can be a tough guy. The true intelligence. The truly smart one is not the tough one, not the tough guy, not the one that can kick a lot of ass. The smart one is the one that figures out how we get out of this mess and still got nuts and berries. Does that make sense? You know what I'm saying with that? Do you realize how much of that brain has to be working exquisitely well all the time for us not to be killing each other every day? And all that stress. I mean, when we started talking to each other, we made friends, we made a deal. Well, basically, it was what? It was the beginning of the first what? Political economy that day. And boy, we've had problems with that one ever since, haven't we? Mm -hmm. And the more and more. And, and gang, it's the, every step we took, every time that brain thought about something, Every time that brain thought about something that helped us take one step farther away from basic 4F level survival, yeah, we solved a problem, but we created a new problem. And here's the issue. Those old problems were nice, easy, simple, life or death, kill or be killed with problems. You didn't have to think about them that much. Every time we solved a problem, we created a new problem, which wasn't quite as easy to solve. This gang, and write this down right now as a frame of reference. I'm going to be referring to this throughout the rest of this behavioral philosophy discussion. I am going to break this brain into three levels. We'll call this just for the sake of just simple, easy. We'll call this old, middle, new. How about that? Let's keep it that simple. I mean, we wanted to, we could go caudal rostral, diencephalon, mesencephalon, and you've got some of that in your handout. But let's keep this right now, just for the sake of this, let's keep this as simple as possible. Just old, middle, new. And, and gang, remember this and write it down this way. The old brain, as we've been talking about, react, reacts to the environment. Reacts to the Tiger, tiger, reacts to the environment. Fight or fight, kill or be killed thoughtlessly, reacting to that environment. I don't need to think. In fact, what we discover is the more we think about something, the probably less good off we are when it comes to fighting tigers. I don't need to sit there and measure your damn fangs. I got to knock them out of your mouth. That's what, you see what I'm saying? I'm sitting there busy waiting my ideas. I'm not doing what I need to do to survive right now. All that kind of stuff. The first level. Let's keep it nice and simple. Let's keep this the old brain. And of course, even in your handout, I gave you some of this stuff I wrote for you. 
So there's different names for that stuff, but let's just some <coughs> that old brain reacts to the environment. We're going to talk about just like our little story that day that we instead of killing each other, let's talk about it. That midbrain we're going to talk about reacts with the environment. Let's call it that. The midbrain we're going to see reacts with the environment. The new brain thinks about and changes the environment. For the better, hopefully. That new brain that starts to think about things, and hopefully what does it do? It makes it better, safer, nicer, easier, funner, happier, safer place to be. And the better the environment is, the better our life is going to be. And the better our life is, hopefully that means the better we're going to have a chance for survival and reproductive success. Which is all the way back down to the whole point of everything in the beginning anyway. See what I'm saying? To this day, even this part of the brain doesn't really give a shit what color your car is. Bottom line, everything this, this brain does today. It's still all about bottom line is, do I get to make, pass on my genes and live long enough to do that? You see what I'm saying with that? You guys, 95% of human psychology is right here. Right here. We're going to see that. Most of what this brain is thinking about to this very day is what? How to have a better life. How to stay safer, better, and have a happier, better life. Because the happier, better off we are today, the better get. Ultimately, what does that mean? Better survival, better reproductive success. You see what I'm saying? Bottom line, to this very day, it's still the same damn thing. But the problem is this. Every time this part of the brain starts to think about this world and changes it. Yeah. What a wonderful thing that was that day. Look at all those advantages. But now, I mean, you know what? And you think about it. i got to think now. Yesterday we're mortal enemies, today i got to worry about your damn feelings. Which is easier to solve? Whack them in the head and talk about your feelings. Which one? Well, let's be honest here, you guys. Which is easier? Whack, Whack in the head or talk about feelings? Do you see what I'm saying? Boy, I tell you, jeez. Do you see what I'm saying with that, you guys? And to this very day, and that brain knows it, to this very, very day, that brain still knows it. It's easier to whack people in the head than talk about damn feelings. To this very day. You see what I'm saying? But that brain also knows if I go around whacking too many people in the head, this guy's going to come along and put me someplace else, and I'm not going to whack that either. So I don't get to whack people in the head so much anymore, which means i got to stuff that shit, which means i got all that energy boiling, and now i got to figure out a way to deal with that. I know how to deal with that. You see what I'm saying? You see where addiction is playing a role here, you guys? You see what I'm saying? You see how everything I'm talking about right now is addiction. Well, no, it's the human experience, but you see how it works for addiction. You see what I'm saying? It works for something. Yeah. Else. All this stuff. I still, I still got all that shit. That part of my, there's a part of my brain. I mean, think about this. Anybody, anybody between this morning and last Thursday, anybody get pissed off at somebody? Anybody get mad at somebody? Did you get mad at somebody? Yeah. Did you? Anybody else get mad? Did you kill him? Did you? Somewhere in the back of your brain, the minute you got mad, there was some part of that brain that said, just kill him, just kill the son of a bitch that's just going to take your food anyway. Can you imagine somebody that part of your brain got that? If we could have had you hooked up, there would have been kill the son of a bitch. That part of the brain was firing. But what happened? This part of the brain said, no, you can't be doing that. Because this guy had come along and put you someplace. <laughs> Remember, we're feeding him to keep the rest of us alive. To follow the rules. We'll call him the cop. <laughs> <laughs> I love that Stephen's the cop. Huh? <laughs> Stephen being the cop. Yeah. 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 Do you see what I'm saying with this, you guys? The problem is, I mean, you think about that. Do you realize how pleasure center rewarding it was to whack somebody in the head? Oh, yeah. Not only did it feel, I, I just used up all that energy. It felt good. You're dead. Fuck you. That's what you get for fucking with me anyway. And everything. You see, do you realize how good that felt? Doing the happy dance. And now I don't get to do that. 
And if I do do that, i got a lot of new stuff to worry about anyway. I don't need to do that anymore, which means that all that energy goes someplace else. And if we don't manage that someplace else <coughs> energy very well, it starts to take its own toll on us. And that brain is going to figure out a way to deal with that energy. And if what that brain discovers is a little shot will do you, that's all it takes. Whatever that shot is. Do you see what I'm saying with that? Does this, who understands addiction better right now than they did at 8 o'clock this morning? Just by looking at this brain. Do you see what I'm saying with this? Let me hear right now. We can from Tuesday, but especially now that this one, let's go to, to the now. This morning, I want to hear some wow points. Every wow point. I don't need applause, by the way, you guys. I don't. Every time you identify a wow point, you just told your brain, never forget that. And you never will. Let me hear a wow point. Yes, sir. I studied the notes that uh, Melissa had put on there, and I, uh, I listened to uh, what she was saying. But you know, I listened to what you were saying. And, and uh, I think that as we evolved from the caveman days and we started having moral thoughts and, and God, well, my creator gave me a mind that made me, that, that, was, that gave me the, the power to think and to change. I don't believe that I, I was going to hit you across the head if you walked across, the, if you walked in front of me with a sheet and a pillowcase on. I don't want to hit you in the head because of something you believe in or something That's you nice. have. I don't have that That's belief right. anymore. I have, I still have that react to. I still have those things to worry about than to worry about taking something from you. Okay, cool. And so what was the wild point? The wild, the, the point, the point that I'm trying to make is that not everybody is made be in the same category. Okay. Thanks. You see what I'm saying? <coughs> we can, we can agree, to, we can agree to disagree. We are all the same. At that level right there, we're all the same. Now, we can, we can agree to disagree. It, it, in the beginning, we're all the same. I agree with that. Who we become individually? It's going to depend on. Well, we got a ways to go with our story, for one thing. In the very beginning, it's going to depend on this process right here. That brain that never forgets. The more you worry, the better you get with that, too. Even from the very beginning. The more you worry, the more you do it, the better you get, the better you get, the easier it is. Right. So I hear you. I hear you. Okay. Now, how then will your way of looking at it help you plug that into your way to, because what's the bottom line here? What's the ice on the prize? understanding the addiction. Right. How is what you're thinking right now and how maybe you may disagree with that. All right, then you wrap that around yourself. How does that help you then better understand addiction in a way that that understanding is going to lead you to become an agent of change for the people you work with. There you go. You form your model with that. Yes, sir. So my, my, my point is reacting to the hidden brain, yeah. the environment. So that's my model point. I the react to. Yeah, the I old know. brain reacts to, the metal brain reacts with. You, you know what I mean by with? All of a sudden, let's make a deal, buddy. Instead of uh, reacting to you, kill you, how about let's react with, let's work together. Mm -hmm. That new brain that thinks about and changes that world. Well, you can see this evolution of the new brain just by looking at, at a kid growing up, right? Because all of a sudden, you know, that's my toy, get the fuck away from me, I'm going to hit you, I'm going to take that. And then all of a sudden they're like, well, we can both play with it together. Aren't we kind of talking here exactly what we kind of talked about last semester process? And, of the you know, the and kids that are assholes generally had really unstable lives. And so, yeah, they didn't have time to learn how to work together because they're just too busy dealing with their That's shit. That's our process of the product from last semester, isn't it? Yeah. Other wild points. Let me hear other wild points. Yes, sir. And then over here. Uh, the thinking shuts down in fire play. When Butterfly kicks in, gang, that's just busy a lot. Not only is that just because it's too damn busy, it can't do them both at the same time. You think about it, though, when, uh, you don't want to be thinking too much. And you, you think about your own, the more you're trying to think while you're trying to kill a tiger, the less you got going for you. I don't got time to sit here and think about shit. I just got to do whatever it's going to take. That's why to this very day, when we create that tiger, we do some pretty stupid shit, don't we? You know, here's an interesting thing with that. There are all kinds of ways in this modern day and age to get ourselves an anger management Ooh. diagnosis. 
get just a little bit too impatient and pissed off at the Walmart line at Christmas and see what happens. <laughs> and so you get stuck in that anger management group. And very often, and I think I've said this before, but it, it, it's pertinent to this. Again, that well point. I mean, think about this for a minute. Everybody think, is they, give yourself a hand. Remember that, that stupid counselor clap? I don't know where they got it. Everybody give yourself a hand for being here today. I don't know where they got that. No, I, nobody ever taught me that one. Where, where did, where's the book? Here's the counselor. Give yourself a hand for being here today. But the thing is, the thing is, then they'll start anger management. And, and think about that. Okay, now, today, everybody, what we're going to do is when you get that mad, here's what we can do. <laughs> think about it. Count to seven, think about it, and go to your happy place. Gang, what the hell's wrong with that? Once you've gotten that mad, you're not thinking about that. A much more effective kind of anger management would be to help people learn how to not get that mad in the first place. Because once you've gotten that mad, fight or flight kicks in, you're not thinking anymore. And that's why we do that stupid stuff. You see what I'm saying? Right here first. Yep. Wow, point. All right. Just the overall how complex the language is and how much the brain it uses. So I'm sitting here thinking, since in, in old time, probably they died so young as to how much the brain is. So if I just shut up and not speak, I'm a little longer. When my brain don't work as much. <laughs> See, I hear your point. And the thing is, it, it's a it's a cost benefit scale. Yeah. Making friends with this guy, lots of good stuff, but then we gotta look at, well, then there was a cost here, now we gotta worry about it, because now we gotta get along. Shit. So the, we, everything is that. Language. How many things did I do for it? Well, yes, it, that means that brain's busy doing that, and I got And maybe us thinkers, maybe if they threw talkers back two million years, we wouldn't be here today. Because maybe. All that brain that we were using to survive two million years ago, if we'd have been busy talking to each other, maybe it wouldn't have been so good after all. But there's that there's that cost benefit analysis with every one of these things. Cool. Wow point. Wow point. So going back to um, fight or flight and the brain, the thinking stops during fight or flight. Don't you think it's a little more complex than that though? Because if I'm running from the cops, I'm in fight or flight. But my ass is thinking of the next next best move to keep away from them. So really, I'm thinking. You're thinking, but not well. Yes, you're right. <laughs> If I get away, I thought really well. New Year's Eve, oh, <laughs> New Year's Eve four <laughs> guys stole a car and they bailed out in my neighborhood and mm -hmm. three of them thought the best thing to do to get away from the cops was to knock down my neighbor's fence and hide in his garden. <laughs> it wasn't good thinking. I mean, I can't explain it. I mean, that's them, but I'm saying, like, I know people <laughs> That have <laughs> think about it though serial killers who have been Ted Bundy they knock on the, the people come right then and he gets away and he gets away for how long but he didn't shut down he thought no, okay but he wasn't in fight or flight in that way doing that and we are going to enjoin that stuff and mm -hmm. those complications with this can I say that you're very good point with that right now can I say let's hold that for a little bit sure yes because we are going to okay. enjoin that and, and things like but that's when we do. We got a whole bunch of this brain. Right now, we're still down here. I mean, we're, we're referring to these two other parts. Okay. Uh, but, but we're still down here right now, you guys, okay. at this level. We are, yeah. And, and the Ted Bundys and things like that, that's going to throw a whole new dimension of stuff, a bunch of dimensions into this thing. Because they don't have the same kind of brains we do. Well, they're missing aspects of their frontal lobe or Actually, you want to know, or... know one of the different is sociopathic brain. I'll, another quick physio thing right now. Sociopathic brain, the Ted Bundy brain, or other sociopath, up here in the frontal lobe, they have exquisite executive functions. Mm -hmm. Remember, what were the executive, how to pull things off, how to do things? But aren't they lacking in logic, or but not have, logic, but... Uh, no stop sign. Empathy. Yeah, yeah, empathy. That socio, that physiologically, they see, electronically, they see that. The executive functions are exquisite. They're real good. They know how to put the ideas. They know how to pull it off. Included. They have no stop sign, which means no empathy. No, you see what I'm saying? That kind of thing like that. So their fight or flight response would be different than ours. Yes. Well, and there was In other words, my fight or flight here then is not about that I'm hurting you, which is going to get me in trouble. Mm -hmm. That is. I'm going to get caught and I'm not going to be able to do on. it again. That is turning me on. 
and I'm so busy with this excitement right now, I don't give a shit. Don't forget, once that level kicks in, I'm not worried about tomorrow anyway. Which means I'm not worried about what happens mm. to me tomorrow. That's how that works like True, that. but if you want to continue doing it, you've got to yeah, In that moment, in that moment, once again, though, you got to remember, in that moment, right. that brain's not thinking about that. Okay. All it's thinking about is right now. Okay. And that's one of the most, that, that is hard to wrap ourselves around mm. that. But when we're stuck in that Nothing moment of that level of that exquisite energy. I see what you're Nothing saying. Nothing else matters. I get it. Now, in uh, a minute, when I get, after I get done getting my jollies from killing you, I may think, oh, shit, what do I do now? Yeah, but, but when I'm doing it, no. But there's an interrupt. There was an, even in some crimes, there's interruption processes where they are interrupted and they still... In that moment of interruption, oh shit, let me get away so I can come back and do this again tomorrow. All right. And every brain is different. Like, it's, it's just, every brain is different. Don't forget. <laughs> every brain from the split second that that egg and sperm get together, let alone the split second we're actually born, has its own history. And studies recently have shown that violent offenders who have like bad upbringings and or don't have a connection with their mother there's parts of their brains that don't light up the same as people who do. There you go. Because it, what? Because process that's to the part of the brain, once again, back to the last semester, process to the product, that part of the brain wasn't wearing mm -hmm. itself. Remember when we talked about the wearing mm -hmm. itself? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Gang, let me, other wild points. Let me hear from people. You quiet people. You people that every time I say wild point, you start to look down at your notes like you're busy thinking about stuff, Kels, don't bother me. <laughs> Which is a good way to say, I don't want to talk because I'm shy or whatever. I want everybody to contribute to this. Wow point, wow point. What was a wow point from this morning? Um, all of it? No, that, no. no. <laughs> what was a wow point this morning? Uh, we need to make their current hedonic calculus. All this plugs into the hedonic calculus. Gang. Did you, do you see, I ask you, who, who has a better understanding of addiction right now than they had at 8 o'clock this morning? What does that mean? Do, do you see, by understanding this, how this is going to, why? What does that got to do with helping that client with that DUI or in that drug court or anything? But you understand this, you're going to understand why they're there. What this is. You're going to understand why they're acting the way they're acting. You're going to understand better what their motivations are and how to tap into that motivation. By understanding this, you're going to better understand how to say what you need to say to that specific individual in a way that is going to help them tap into their motivations. By understanding this, you're going to understand behavior better. And what's the biggest part of that is that means I don't have to be so fucking mad at you anymore. And what? Oh, well, oh by the way, when I'm that mad at you, fight or flight kicks in, thinking chest down, I'm no longer a counselor. Yeah. All that. That's what, that's what this is all about, you guys. Do you see what I'm saying with this? Understanding that brain. Hey, let's take a break. We're gonna get. We're gonna. We're gonna. I did switch gears, and because this is actually two different classes, and I did go over a little bit. So thank you for your patience with that. But isn't this fascinating, you guys? Yes. So excited about the brain. <laughs> I can't help myself. I totally am.